700 people from two weeks ago. There has been a rapid increase in defence support uh, in the recent days due to this increase in COVID-19 cases and will likely increase as uh, the time goes ahead. Some of our new tasks include, in New South Wales, we have approximately 500 personnel supporting the New South Wales Police at border control points. Uh, these personnel are currently located in 29 different locations. I can advise that the 12 ADF members who were isolating at RAF Base Wagga, who had previously been identified as attending the Crossroads Hotel, have now tested negative for COVID-19. However, in accordance with New South Wales health orders, they will continue to self-isolate as precautionary measure. In South Australia, we have uh, 60 personnel currently supporting South Australia Police with their border control points along the Victoria-South Australia border. In Victoria, we have about 160 ADF personnel who are supporting uh, testing sites across Melbourne. We also have about 100 personnel currently supporting uh, Victorian Police with their Metropolitan control, uh, Police Control checkpoints. And today I've approved an increase of 75 personnel for that task, bringing it to a total of 175 personnel. We also have a number of ADF personnel assisting Victorian authorities with their planning. In particular, the Victorian Police, the State Control Centre at Emergency Management Victoria, and the Department of Health and Human Services. We've also recommenced our support to the Victorian Police Assistance Line uh, in Ballarat. And over the weekend, the Victorian Government uh, accepted an, uh, an offer of an additional 1,000 uh, ADF personnel. We are currently working very closely with the Victorian Government and their authorities to finalise the arrangements for the deployment of these 1,000 personnel, uh, including trying to determine exactly what support would, that the ADF would be best suited to provide. While this detailed planning is occurring with the Victorian authorities, we are also uh, working to ensure our personnel are available to deploy quickly once the specific requests are known. The ADF has built strong partnerships with the state and territories through Operation Bushfire Assist and now Operation COVID-19. This year, perhaps more than any other, the ADS has proved it can provide rapid and scalable assistance in support of lead agencies so they can focus on their frontline responsibilities. It is a privilege for our personnel to be able to serve their local communities. I'm happy to take a few questions. So we'll continue to augment the Victorian police at some of those police checkpoints. Um, we could also accompany the police if they need to do any sort of compliance checking and they're one of the ones being considered. Um, there's certainly other range of tasks that we've done in other states and territories that we would consider if the Victorian authorities believe they are suitable. Uh, we expect that over the next few days we'll get uh, uh, better clarity from the Victorian authorities. Uh, our team's working very closely to work out what options are available and then it will take a few days for our personnel to deploy down to uh, Victoria. Uh, that's a matter for the Victorian Government. Uh, the ADF does stand by to support the Victorian authorities where they think it's suitable. Uh, as you know, the Victorian Government decided to use uh, Corrections Victoria for the tasks at the hotel. That is an appropriate task uh, for Vic uh, Corrections Victoria, but we do stand by to support wherever the Victorians require us.
Uh, look, I, I don't want to uh, guess what went wrong in Victoria, but uh, in the other states and territories where we've supported with the hotels, uh, we've made sure our personnel are fully trained. They're a disciplined workforce with a chain of command that, uh, that will supervise them on task. Um, and uh, as, as military personnel, they're very proud to be supporting the nation. Okay, that was Major General Paul Kenny from the ADF and he says 12 ADF personnel who are isolating after attending the Crossroads Hotel in Kazula in southwest Sydney have tested negative at this point but they will continue to isolate though for the full 14 days. Well now let's get the latest coronavirus figures here and overseas. ABC analyst Casey Briggs joins us now. Casey